Welcome back to the news. Plunder Storm and 10.2.6 are settling in, and that means we can look to the future. And with Discourse being dominated by Plunderstorm, it turns out a lot has slipped under our noses. We've got major news for those who thought it was perhaps neat to see Blizzard experiment, but don't want a PvPvE hybrid battle royale. Then our not yet patented Newsnet is uh, here to catch other things, like the 10.2.7 stuff on uh, Blizzard servers, Season 4 actually looking better than we expected, some immediate nice 10 to 6 additions, and pretty big revamp potential for literally all of the old armor and weapons and gear in the game. Just kind of crazy. Let's get into it. Usually we get two minor patches for every major patch. We've had 10.2.5, 10.2.6, and now 10.2.7. 10.2.7 Darkheart exists, and we're probably only a few weeks away from finding out what it'll be. Algalon, which is a Twitter bot that reports when it finds new builds on the Battle.net servers, posted that it found a 10.2.7 build last week. It was on the vendor called WoWv2, and as for what that means, well, Basically, we're aware that Blizzard usually host test builds over the holidays to get internal feedback for things, and WoW v2 is actually used for things like, say, hosting the War Within from just before Christmas until last week, presumably for staff to play. So right now we believe that Blizzard is doing internal tests of patch 10.2.7 before it comes to PTR, that will actually be more interesting than you may think. And of course, 10.2.7 PTR will be happening shortly after Season 4 goes live, and Season 4 is due to be on the PTR any time now. And 10.2.7, I believe, is actually going to be quite a bit more than we thought. Initially, we thought, because of course it was called Time Running Pandemonium, panda, as in the creature, so we all thought there was some sort of augmented time walking. Thing is, though, do you remember that Vampire Survivors mode string we found in December? Remember some of that suspicious stat mind gear? Well, Holly Longdale probably knows we saw those things. Recently, she said, Fun to see players sharing Plunderstorm stories and the feedback as the event evolves. We have Season 4 coming up and news soon. TM, for all of you PvEers, curious what we have in store for you. We are experimenting leading up to the War Within, still more on tap. Oh boy. <laughs> so, Plunderstorm was an experiment, and seemingly there's another one to come. And again, I think of that Vampire Survivors mode that was data mined, and certainly if you think about the idea of PvE, you know, farming creeps, farming mobs, and you mix that in with some of the things that they've tried with, uh, of course, the Plunderstorm, I don't know, man, it actually could be quite interesting. And then, Associate Game Director Jeremy Fiesel said, Plunderstorm is here and Pandemonium is coming. Probably the wildest pre-expansion period in WoW history. If you enjoy Dragonflight's patches, please let us know what you'd like to see in The War Within. So, the, look, look how he said that. So whatever this Pandemonium is, it does seem to be some sort of pre expansion, experimental event thing, I have got to wonder, with Pandemonium and with Plunderstorm, is this Blizzard actually doing tests for proper feature development in the future? If so, to be honest, I am super damn excited, including for having my battle tag just being, you know, there on uh, Plunderstorm, which of course means people see, ah, look, it's a dickhead from YouTube, let's kill him, and that can happen IRL unless you use today's sponsor, which is working for me right now in the background. So, spam mails, calls, they're a real annoyance, and it's all because of data brokers who basically trade in harvesting and selling our data. Now, you do have the legal right to get that kind of thing taken down, but the downside is that can take hours, and that's where today's sponsor, incogni.com slash Warcraft comes in. They basically automate those takedowns for you, and Code Bellular Warcraft gets you 60% off their annual plan. Now, when I signed up about three months ago, they immediately found me on 48 data brokers. They immediately sent 42 takedown requests, and six were completed. And it was kind of hilarious, because just that day, I had got a random message from a recruiter on my, like, personal, like a personal text message. I had no idea how that happened. But when I was going through the Incogni dashboard, I actually saw that my details were we're on a data broker that's like four recruiters. It's kind of weird. And I sure as hell didn't put it there. But point is, now that I've got Cogni working in the background doing all of those takedowns, I just rest a bit easier knowing that my info isn't being plastered about on all of these databases being sold. And the thing is, often this is not your fault. It's other parties that have data leaks. I mean, you hear it all the time in the news, right? Millions of accounts being breached in very, very large hacks. Well, that information ends up being 
hoovered up by the data brokers, and then they trade in it, and then you just get a bunch of spam. Also, for just the sake of privacy, there are websites like Bean Verified that are creepy as hell, where you can just, like, look for people. So getting that info taken down, I think, is really good. The thing is, though, if you take it down, it can just pop up again. And that's why Incogni takes that data down, but then it keeps it down by rescanning brokers over time, all automatically. So you can give them a shot today at incogni.com forward slash belly of the warcraft for an exclusive 60% discount. Let's get into season four. We have our name, it is called Awakened. And we've got a stack of wins and maybe one or two controversies. First, and probably the bad news for some, legendaries will be relevant in season four. There are two legendary items in the data, both are called Scale of Awakening, and they're used to upgrade Najuro and Feralath to eye level 502 and enable higher upgrades. We've got no clue how to get them, but... I would certainly hope the Blizzard have learned lessons from seasons two and three, and maybe there's less RNG. Maybe there's less of a massive gold buy-in, and uh, this can kind of just be a fun thing for people to play with, because it does seem there's a lot of negative player feedback and that kind of stuff. Next then, let's just talk about the wins. Number one, a splash screen for season four has been datamined, and uh, well, the text has no hint of a raid rotation, and that is fairly interesting. That's got people speculating that all three raids will be available, which is not like how it was done with the fated season in the Shadowlands. Of course, we've got no confirmation on this, it's just what people are thinking based on that data mining, but it certainly would combat the feedback that having to reprogress three raids at once as the weeks were going by was a less than pleasant experience last time around. Who knows, maybe just giving players a bunch of freedom to uh, go and work on their objectives is the way to go? We will have to see. What is next, though, is Dinars. That is the news. I have nothing more to say about it because they're data mined, but we don't really know anything else. So it's a Dinar, uh, just like Ian said, you know, there would be something like that. So yeah, hopefully with this, you'll be able to, you know, pick some items after you've done some raids and just get them. Again, we don't really know how they're actually going to implement this, but whatever they do, I think will be telling us to the future. Next, dungeons. So originally, I think a lot of people thought it was bad news that we were getting the eight original Dragonflight dungeons, but remember, well, the thundering seasonal affix in season one kind of blew, and they're not doing seasonal affixes anymore. Also, affixes have generally been thoroughly defanged all expansion, and remember the whole revamp of how dungeon difficulty and rewards work? That's starting in Season 4, not The War Within. So, of course, you know, the way they have it between Normal and Heroic and Mythic, and then you have 10 levels of Mythic as it pertains to gearing. The TLDR is, I think it's a way more healthy system, and of course we have a full video overview of that that we posted last week if you'd like just a little bit more detail on that. I'd recommend checking it out, I think it'll be very healthy for the game, and I'm actually kind of excited to see what it feels like in this season. Now, alongside the dungeon changes, we are likely getting some reworked trinkets. And these are really neat. These are six dungeon trinkets that have just straight up been reworked. Some of them are getting a really cool glow up. Um, others like the tome have been reworked to not be a horrible nightmare to use. And I do love seeing like design changes like this because it shows how far we've came in just a, a year or two design wise. Tank trinkets were RNG, which was a pain the newer revamps are more reliable. Some DPS trinkets required standing in a thing like Rune of Power or tracking a debuff to use optimally, so they've been changed to deal damage passively. It does seem like they're actually trying to apply lessons they've learned, which is something I always love. But, of course, there's a problem. Season 4 is a few weeks away, and uh, we all live in the here and now. So what about patch 10.2.6? Turns out, if you're an achievement fanatic, uh, yeah, you could be eating pretty damn good. I think I'll be doing some of these in my character. Maybe not the biggest one, though, because if you want to ride Tyvan, the, uh, you know, the nice dog from the Unaran Plains, there's a new meta achievement for the whole expansion and its rewards have been revealed. You have to do all three raids, complete every dungeon on Mythic, do Pathfinder, do every quest, max out all the reps and renowns, you've got to do all the races in the Isles, including the advanced ones and the reverse ones, and the gargantuan, you know, base, Dragonflight, Forbidden Reach, Zaralek Caverns, and Emerald Dream meta achievements. So, good luck, you're going to need it, but I suppose if you want a structured way to do literally all of the things and get a mount you might actually have an emotional connection with, that's how to do it. But what if you're yearning for the good old days? What if you want to go back to the Shadowlands and you want to get Zoval's pet dog? Because, yes, we're back! 
Here, here's what's going on. They've added a new mount, right, to the meta achievement. It's called Zoval Soul Eater. Uh, basically, it is the Gladiator mount, but recolored. Now available to PvE-only players, which is really nice. But, of course, you do have to get the, uh, the entire Shadowlands meta achievement, which is quite a lot of Shadowlands. Sticking with the Shadowlands, though, for those of you who prefer the older Covenant style to your recently updated Covenant abilities, things like, say, Jadefire Stomp and Convoke the Spirits, those can be reverted now to their older appearance via Glyphs, and the Glyphs will come from the Shadowlands zone that the ability came from, but the character will need to be honored with that zone's reputation to use it. Thankfully, of course, honored really does not take that long whatsoever. Next then, for all you gamers still Mythic Plusing, Incorporeal and Afflicted were buffed. And then they were nerfed harder than they were buffed, because it turns out the buffs were actually an accident, albeit one that made people, uh, you know, feel a little bit worried for a bit. The Afflicted Ghost now takes an extra two seconds to cast its debuff, that's up to 12 from 10. The Incorporeal Ghosts now spawn closer to the group on average, which is really helpful for visibility and, of course, you know, shorter range CC being able to actually deal with them. And basically, this is the defanging of affixes just continuing. Now beyond that, there is not a massive amount of note beyond Mistweaver getting some fancy new talents, which is really rare this late into the expansion. And I really like that, they're still doing that work. Also, Priest's Leap of Faith has been updated to be marginally less trolly, which is of course very sad to me, speaking as a Priest player. Um, but it will be more useful because it will not interrupt whatever the target is casting, so that's neat. And also, a bunch of new shirts and items were added to the Trial of Style vendor, but the Trial of Style only lasts for four days, uh, it actually just ended. If you want the next one, you'll have to wait till the 31st of August. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a bit weird, there needs to be more of them. Next then, this is really interesting and it's out of left field. So we saw this up graphics option in Cataclysm Classic. When you clicked it, nothing happened and there was a lot of speculation until just now because Marleman, esteemed and somewhat retired data miner of legend showed off a bunch of textures that were found in the most recent Cataclysm beta build. And lo and behold, we have upscaled textures. And I know you might be thinking of the Grand Theft Auto remaster or of any game remasters that have just really not worked. In this case, while things aren't perfect, I am very impressed by the quality of these. And some of these before comparisons here, they aren't old Cataclysm, by the way. They are from 10.0, so Dragonflight. It basically seems like the classic team are trying what looks like some sort of AI upscaling and some older game textures. Per Marleman, there are too many checks if uh, they're all upscaled or if they're actually just restored from a higher resolution original that like the artist literally made before it's compressed for the game. Um, so who knows, it's not actually available in game for testing. So any previews of this that you see will be unlit. And obviously, you know, the lighting really does make it when it comes to a lot of this stuff. But I've got to say, I really was impressed. And who knows, if this is a success in the Cataclysm beta, I mean, if it's just a bunch of assets, and it's easy to put those assets into our game client, could that be something we could get in modern? I mean, for a lot of people, there are so many older sets in the game that just are, you know, they're iconic. And you don't really want a remaster of them because you want to retain the original character, but maybe you just don't want it to look super, you know, smeary and blurry. I mean, if so, I think this could make for some really cool mogs if they do it right. And I know, of course, like hearing the AI buzzword, that might be, uh, you know, spooky to some. Th this is one of those things, the upscaling, where I actually do think that's a, a really reasonable use of that tech. I mean, similar things. I mean, hey, think about like DLSS and FSR and all of those things that are actually really useful, you know, day-to-day -day tools of machine learning. Uh, so anyway, I think some of these comparisons could be gorgeous. And really, the clincher here is the thing that's retained the, the whole period as WoW's art direction, the solid lighting, the proportions of the models. And that's always been the thing. Warcraft 3, in some technical aspects, didn't look amazing for its day, but it had the Blizzard art style, it had the chunky proportions, and that's what people loved. So with a lot of that solved, the already beautiful classic, I think might actually just look more beautiful. And I mean, who knows, you might just be able to show off your upscaled original judgment armor in the War Within if this comes to pass. But thankfully, if it's not to your taste or it has issues, it is currently planned as a toggle option in the Cata Beta client. So I've got to imagine they wouldn't just wholesale force it in everyone because 
maybe it's pretty nostalgic to look like some sort of TBC era clown gear character, because, I mean, hey, that's where it was at back in the day. Anyhow, that's the news this week. In coming weeks, expect to see so much go down all at once. We are running out of time for the War Within's testing to actually start. That will be major. Uh, so we might actually get the whole wombo combo of 1027 and 11.0 all at once. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, no rest. No rest for the wicked. I think we're going to have a busy time over here. Anyway, that's it for me. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Let me know what you think pandemonium could be. And I suppose based on Plunderstorm, like, what do you what do you think they could do? If they're just having fun and making weird game jam things in the WoW engine, what what do you think they should do? Is there a game you really enjoyed you actually think could map onto that? I would love to hear, and I'm sure they would love to hear as well. Okay, hope you have a brilliant day. Thank you for tuning in, and we'll see you again soon.